Is that? We love full bellies. <laughs> um, I'm Andrew Wooding. This is Andy Weir. Uh, we're one third of Church Army's six person research unit based in Sheffield. <coughs> Uh, Andy here is a researcher with a PhD. Um, I don't have a PhD, but I'm a Church Army evangelist, and I've been part of the research unit since 2002, mainly writing, editing, and doing the administration. I was also on the National Fresh Expressions team for five years under Stephen Croft and Graham Cray. The research we're talking about today um, is just one part of a bigger program of work we launched this month, about two weeks ago, um, and it consists of four reports. Uh, the main report is this really big purple one written by George Lings called The Day of Small Things. It's an analysis of fresh expressions of church in half the dioceses in England, that's 21 dioceses, um, and uh, it was written by George Lings, the director and founder of Church Army's research unit. You may have been to the seminar here an hour ago uh, about attenders of fresh expressions of church. Do fresh expressions attract existing Christians, people who don't go to church but have some church background, or do they attract those with no church experience at all? Claire Dalpra and John Vivian, who were standing here an hour ago, they surveyed church members, not just the leaders, and their findings are in this report called Who's There? Two hours ago with George, you would have heard Elspeth McGann um, with her report called What Happens After Research. Did the diocese actually do anything with our research? And if they did, how did it help them? And finally, written by my colleague here, Andy Weir, is Sustaining Young Churches. Thanks, Andrew. Um, all those reports are freely available on our website via the um, link on the screen. With relation to sustainability, I'd like to begin with the observation that there's all manner of excellent resources out there about how to start a fresh expression of church. But as the fresh expressions movement becomes more established and the number of these young churches continues to grow, it's really, really important that we also ask questions about their sustainability. That's, we, that's why we, as a research unit, embarked on the study that I'm about to describe. Um, but before I proceed, let me just draw your attention to the word pilot um, within the subtitle of our report. Um, as a relatively small-scale pilot study that Church Army funded itself, our research certainly doesn't attempt to provide a definitive or a comprehensive answer to every conceivable question about sustainability within fresh expressions of church. But in the same way as the subtitle of those Grove books, with which some of you might be familiar, is not the last word, but often the first, um, I hope that the ideas and insights that we present this afternoon might be helpful for you in beginning to open up and make sense of some really, really important and timely questions. Specifically, the two key questions that this piece of research addresses are firstly, what does it even mean to talk of sustainability within the context of fresh expressions of church? And then secondly, what encourages and inhibits their sustainability. In short, what helps sustainability and what potentially hinders sustainability? Now, um, this has been a different kind of research project to the other ones that Andrew was telling you about. Um, this research has been kind of exploratory in the sense that we've been trying to um, map out and make sense of some previously uncharted territory, stuff that hasn't really been researched before. It's been qualitative in that we've been really trying to pay close attention to the stories and experiences of people involved in fresh expressions who are wrestling with some quite complex and tricky issues about what does sustainability mean in practice. And it's been appreciative in the sense that in studying sustainability, we could have decided to study a whole load of things which haven't worked out and which haven't lasted, and that could have been one way of studying it. But instead, it's been appreciative because we've been trying to draw out what lesson can be gleaned or appreciated 
from the stories and experiences of fresh expressions that have actually been going for some time. So in practical terms, and you can read more in detail, if you're interested in research methodology, you can read more in detail in, in the reports themselves. But in short, our research has involved a series of um, detailed case studies within 12 different fresh expressions of church. Um, alongside, uh, and alongside those case studies, we've been exploring the whole concept of sustainability with some leading thinkers, writers, commentators from within the fresh expressions movement and wider church, people like Phil Potter, who we heard from earlier, Michael Moyner, Johnny Baker, key, key thinkers and practitioners in that regard. Um, but without further ado, let us just briefly, first of all, introduce some of the key headlines in relation to that first question. What does it even mean to talk of sustainability in the context of fresh expressions of church? Now, I don't know about you, but to me it seems that often when the word sustainability comes up in popular conversation or the media, it generates this big sense of panic or crisis. For example, the suggestion that the population of the planet is reaching unsustainable levels. Or that current levels of debt and public borrowing are unsustainable. Or talk of the unsustainable workloads of teachers, doctors and social workers. And often, I think, we, we, we can see that sense of panic and anxiety mirrored in the way that we talk about sustainability in our churches. Now, I don't want to deny the very real challenges that the church currently faces, but I do want to suggest that the way that we as a church talk about sustainability shouldn't be rooted in fear or in panic, but in our beliefs and convictions about God. So within the report, we suggest that we need a theology of sustainability. Our search for sustainability needs to be rooted in a vision of the abundance and generosity of God. It needs to be informed by the insight that effective change can only happen when we mobilise a community's God-given assets, gifts and strengths. And it also needs to be informed by the mystery at the heart of the Gospel, that sustainability and fruitfulness are not found in self-preservation and clinging on to what we've got, but by following Jesus' example of generous, self-giving love. And then finally, it needs to also be informed by this idea of interdependence, which we'd just like to go on and unpack a little bit more. You see, one of the key things that we found by, in this research is that within an Anglican context, the sustainability of a fresh expression of church is often intimately connected to the sustainability of its parent or sending church. Indeed, most fresh expressions of church within the Church of England still operate within the parish of their sending church and continue to have really strong supportive links with that church. Or to put it in slightly more technical vocabulary, the majority of Anglican fresh expressions of church are runners, not seeds. Within the seed model, which is represented on the screen by the picture of the dandelion clock, a small seed is sent or blown out some distance to start a completely new plant. But we found that this model only ap applies to only a relatively small proportion of Anglican fresh expressions. Most, sorry, I've gone forward. Um, <laughs> most Anglican fresh expressions of church are more like the strawberry plant, more like the runners from a strawberry plant. They're no longer completely dependent on their parent church but they're not completely independent either. And we found that that whole distinction between seeds and runners seems to have some really, really important implications for the way that we talk about sustainability within fresh expressions of church. For instance, in our report, we suggest that the classic three self principles are particularly useful for assessing sustainability within the seed fresh expressions of church and traditional church plants. But a purist interpretation of these principles, the insistence that all fresh expressions should be self-financing, self-governing and completely self-reproducing, is less likely to connect with the experience of many parish-based runners. 
So we go on then to talk in our report about the need for those three self-principles to be broadened out, to give greater attention to the wider ecclesial environment, the wider church environment that supports fresh expressions of church. So here the focus is not so much on the sustainability of this or that particular congregation, but on the sustainability of the wider network or ecosystem within which all manner of different expressions of church can be nurtured or sustained. And then related to this, I think there's also the really, really interesting question of whether sustainability should always be equated with permanence. Uh, the quote there from Stephen Croft. On the one hand, some of the people we spoke to identified some very good reasons why at least some fresh expressions of church shouldn't be in, uh, expected to go on indefinitely. So, for example, one of our conversation partners, Stephen Croft, drew on Bob Jackson's picture of the church as a garden, suggesting that within the overall ecology of church life, some fresh expressions may only exist for a season. But on the other hand, I think there's also reasons to be really, really cautious about uttering those words, this is only for a season, too readily in the context of fresh expressions. You see, the wider church doesn't take the decision to close inherited mode congregations lightly. And so I'd su suggest that the same should also be true of fresh expressions of church, if they're to be taken seriously as church. So perhaps with too strong an emphasis on their seasonality, there's a risk that young churches which are precious and yet fragile might be discarded too easily. So moving on then, just to that um, second research question, what encourages and inhibits sustainability within fresh expressions of church? You'll see from this diagram that we've identified these three different types of factor that can either help or hinder a fresh expression sustain sustainability. So beginning in the middle, there are things that a fresh expression itself can either do or not do that can help or hinder its sustainability. Then moving outwards, there's various, in, there's various ways in which the wider church can either be a help or indeed a hindrance. And then we've also identified this outer layer of external variables that seem to make sustainability easier for some fresh expressions of church and harder, than for, harder for others. Now you can read more in detail about each of those factors within our report, but in order to give you a sneak preview of the findings, we thought we'd be just slightly playful and provocative and tell you what you need to do if you want to give a fresh expression of church the kiss of death. We've rehearsed this twice and that always scares me when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're part of a fresh expression of church or you help to lead one, here are three tips on how to give it the kiss of death. Make a note. <laughs> Number one, once you've found a successful format that works once or twice, sit back, relax, and do all that you can to get stuck in a rut. You don't need to change anything for at least 10 years. Number two, don't bother drawing a team together. As a leader, it's much quicker and efficient to do everything yourself. And don't even think about asking newer members from the local community to get involved and help. Your aim is to make them as dependent on you as possible. And number three, resolutely refuse all offers of outside help and do everything you can to discourage people with new ideas, especially if those ideas involve mission, evangelism, or generosity. I hope you've written those down. Okay. Now, if there's anyone here who isn't directly involved in a fresh expression, but, might, but is part of a parish that has one, here are three tips prepared especially for you. Number one, if you want to give a fresh expression in your parish the kiss of death, be as generally awkward and obstructive as possible. For example, repeatedly ask questions like, and when are all these people you're reaching going to start coming to real church? I can see that doesn't connect with anyone at all. No. Number two, try to give your fresh expression leaders as many extra, extra responsibilities as possible. For example, if you've got a gifted layperson 
who's um, leading a flourishing messy church, why not strongly suggest that they really, really should consider becoming church warden and treasurer as well? <laughs> and number three, give the fresh expression as little acknowledgement and recognition as you possibly can. Don't pray for it in your Sunday service. Don't mention it in your notice sheet, website or parish visits. And certainly don't entertain the thought that you might be able to learn something from them. Do we have any bishops or archdeacons in the room? <laughs> <laughs> are, this is for leaders in the wider church. You might work for a district or a diocese or uh, wherever. For those of you who play a leadership role in the wider church, I've got three tips for you as well. In order to give fresh expressions the kiss of death, consistently give the message that they are optional extras, not valued expressions of church. You'll find that parish interregnums are a particularly good time to practice this one. Whenever a parish in your deanery or diocese is an interregnum, make sure that any fresh expressions of church are the first thing to be disregarded and forgotten. Number two, Assume that one size fits all. Don't entertain the thought that different types of fresh expression of church might need different kinds of support. And finally, be as unimaginative and controlling as you possibly can in the way you use financial resources. Very important. So there you have it. Hopefully by now you all know how to give a fresh expression of church the kiss of death, and our work here is almost done. But just in case there's a few people here who might want to learn a little bit about how to help fresh expressions of church survive and thrive, I suppose I should say a little bit about these as well. In short, you need to take what we've just told you about giving fresh expressions the kiss of death and do pretty much exactly the opposite. But we've also prepared just a few short words and pictures that might help with this as well. So I think the first thing to remember is that fresh expressions of church are young churches. And like all young people, they're still learning and they won't get it right every time. But they need supportive parents. Parents that are committed to learning and journeying together with them all the way into adulthood. And importantly, are willing to tailor their parenting style to different stages of the journey. The next point, which is represented by the metronome, is that fresh expressions of church need to take time to discover the rhythms and practices that are right for their context. But alongside that, they also need, need to be willing to change and adapt those rhythms amidst changing seasons of life. Of all the factors we've identified, uh, let us suggest that when it comes to sustainability and involving others, is one of the most important. The obvious reason for this is that spreading the work across a wider team means that everything isn't dependent on just one person. But I think even more importantly than that, I think there's something about creating opportunities for everyone to contribute. Can that, that can be a really, really powerful tool for growing a deeper sense of ownership and belonging within a community. The next piece of advice uh, with those two hands is that fresh expressions of church need to be both receivers and givers. They shouldn't be too proud to ask for help and support from the wider church and others in the community. But they also need to remember to be generous. As we said earlier on, there's this mystery at the heart of the gospel that sustainability and fruitfulness aren't to be found in self-preservation and clinging on to what we've got but by following Jesus' example of generous, self-giving love. And keep going. To grow a sustainable, fresh expression of church, the people involved also need considerable perseverance, stickability and patience. But alongside this, they also sometimes do need wisdom in knowing when to stop. And then finally, let me just finish by stating the obvious. All that we've just said about sustaining fresh expressions of church needs to be rooted and undergirded by a commitment to following Jesus. 
And indeed, each of those six verbs that we just talked about, discovering, adapting, involving, receiving, giving, persevering, each of them is an expression of our discipleship. Thank you very, very much for listening. If you'd like to discuss this further and be part of um, continued conversation, we'd love to see you downstairs. I think it's in the Kemp room.